So in this video, I'm going to make my own chat GPT based voice assistant using ESP32. Seriously, <laughs> let me show you a quick demo. What is your name? I'm an AI digital assistant and do not have a name. You can call me OpenAI. What can I assist you with? Tell me your favorite movie. I'm an AI and I don't have personal preferences, but some popular movies include The Shawshank Redemption, The Godfather, and The Dark Knight. Now here some of you people must be thinking that I already made the similar project last year. Well, you are absolutely right. Last year I made a complete series of 4 episodes of making our own chat GPT based voice assistant and you all people kind of loved that video series and many of you people tried to replicate that project as well. But I got a lot of feedback from you regarding a lot of issues that you were facing in the hardware in the coding and also in generating the API keys. And also that series was of four episodes and many of you people missed one or two episodes so they were not able to successfully make it. So now to solve all those issues, I came up with the version two of the project so that by watching this single video, you will be easily and successfully be able to make your own chat GPT based voice assistant using ESP32. But the condition is you need to watch the complete video, don't skip any of the part and follow all the steps shown in the video properly. So now let's get started with the project by covering the hardware part first. So for making this project, you need to have all these components whose list you can easily find in the description of this video. And after that, you need to connect them all according to the schematic diagram. Now here I'll be providing the schematic diagram in my GitHub repository. So after finalizing the schematic, we designed our own custom PCB for it. And here on the PCB, we added a big hole for the speaker to get easily rest fitted on it. And after that, we gave the PCB order to Next PCB. So Next PCB is one of the most experienced PCB manufacturer in China with an experience of more than 15 years. And well, they got an amazing tool that will help you to locate different different issues in your PCB for free of cost. <laughs> Let me show you. So on your Windows system, you can download this DFM design analysis software that will give you the detailed analysis of your PCB. For example, here I have uploaded the Gerber file of my PCB project and when I click on this button, it will start analyzing my complete PCB file and generate a DFM report for me which contains all the details about it and its issues. Now what's the best thing which I like in it is, it not just recognizes the issue but it will also let us know where the issue exactly is on our PCB and what will go wrong if we don't solve that issue. For example, in my PCB, I'm having a silk screen design error and if I click on it, as you can see, I got six different points on which the error is. And if I click on one of the point, I can see exact location on my PCB where the problem lies. So here basically the issue is my silk screen is overlapping with the component, which is kind of okay for me because it's just a prototype project. But here you can see that if we don't solve this issue, what may get wrong while manufacturing the PCB. So with the help of this thing, you can modify your PCB to solve this issue before giving it to manufacturer. And now as the software is from next PCB, I can place my PCB order with the software itself. So here I upload the Gerber file of my PCB and here I place the order for the 10 PCBs with a green color masking and I ordered it via FedEx courier service. So after a couple of days, I received my order in a box and we get to see the PCBs safely packed with the vacuum packaging. And along with this, we also got two PCB scales that were having a lot of information about the pads, track width, wire, and lot other PCB parameters. Then we open up the packet and here is the PCB of our project. This looks really premium, like the silk screen on it feels really very good. So that's how you can get your custom PCBs manufacturer from Next PCBs. I'll be leaving away the links down in the description. So after getting the PCBs, one by one, we started shouldering all the components on it. Now here, we just use the female bug strip for all the components so that we can reuse them once we are done with this project. Now in this project, we were having only one single SMD component, which is this HT7333 voltage regulator IC. So here after shouldering all the components, the final project looks like this. Neat and very compact. So with this, we are done with the hardware part of the project. Now let's jump on to the coding and the API section. So here, first of all, we need to get two API keys, one from Google Cloud and other from OpenAI. So now first to get the API key from Google Cloud, you need to go to cloud.google.com and here just log in with your Google account. Then here you need to search for speech to text, click on this link. And here we can see that we get a $300 free credit initially to use these APIs. So let's click on try it for free. Here I'll select the country as India, then provide my business name here. And at this point, you need to provide your credit card details. 
Now here after you provide your credit card details, they will charge a very little amount just for verification. So don't worry. So after providing my card details, it asks for the CVV number. And then after providing the OTP, this step one is completed. And in this step two, we need to provide a couple of more details. Now previously, it was not like that, like providing the credit card details was enough. But this time the rules are changed. You need to submit the documents to verify that the card is yours and you need to apply your identity proof as well. So for the card proof, what I did is I prepared this document in which I have both front and back side of my credit card visible here. Now here I uploaded both front and back because on the front I was just having my name written on it while the credit card number was written on the back side. Now here you can hide the important details like the expiry date, the CVV number and just show the last four digits of your credit card. Now here for the second document I uploaded the PAN card because they need an identity proof which has the name that exactly matches with the name on your credit card. And after uploading both the documents I just click on the submit button and now it says to wait for few days for verification. But luckily my verification was done in couple of minutes and now here I can just refresh this page which takes me to the home page of my Google Cloud account. Now here I will show you the generic process to enable the speech to text API and for that you need to search for speech to text here and just click on the speech to text API. Click on enable and now here just go to credentials, create credentials and select API key. Now here it will automatically generate one API key for you which you need to copy and paste it inside your computer as we will require this key at the time of coding. Now with this we are done with the speech to text API from Google Cloud. Now the next step is to get the OpenAI API key and for that you need to go to platform.openai.com and here just log in with your Google account. After that just fill up your basic details and click on agree. Now here if you go to the usage section you'll get to see that initially you get a $5 credit to use their API keys for completely free of cost. After that just go to the API key and here first we need to verify our phone number to get the keys. So after the verification just give a name to the key. Here I'll give it the name as ChatGPT. And here I got my secret key which again I need to copy and paste in somewhere in my computer because now we won't be able to see this key again. Now after getting the key, let's just try to verify if everything is working perfectly fine with OpenAI or not. So for that I'll open the Postman application and here just click on file and select new. Click on HTTP request and here we will use the post request method for this URL. Now in the header section, we will add two key value pairs. One is the content type, which is application forward slash JSON. And second is the authorization in which we will provide bearer space our open AI API key. And then in the body, if I paste the previously used body, which contains the model name, prompt, temperature and token, let's see what happens. So let's click on the send button. Now here we are getting an error called as model has been deprecated. Now this is one of the common error which many of you people started facing recently. And to get the solution of this problem you just need to go to this page and here as you can see that the model got shut down on 4th of January and we need to replace it with this new model. So I'll copy it and paste it in the body and let's try it again. And this time I got complete response from OpenAI which means everything is working fine. And likewise in future if this model also gets shut down now you know how to replace the new model and how to make it work. So as we got both the API keys now let's move on to the code part and let's see how to integrate this API keys in the code. So now for the code what you need to do is you need to go to my github repository whose link you can find in the description of this video and here you need to go to ESP32 chat GPT v2 repository and just click on the download zip button. After downloading this unzip that folder and you will find two folders in it one is ESP32 speech to text and the other is the text to speech. Now I'll go to speech to text first so here inside this we have all this different kind of libraries which you need to keep in the same folder only don't just replace it or don't do anything here. In this single folder you need to have all these files so this is also one of the common mistake people do they just have this single file in the folder and all these files in the other folder but yeah uh, i'll double click on it and it will open up the arduino ide perfect here is the sketch so here i have already provided all the necessary things to be taken care of before uploading this code or to make this code work on your system first is you need to have the esp32 boards package version 1.0.6 and for having the same version first of all you need to go to arduino preferences and first you need to paste this line of 
uh, this particular link in your uh, Arduino preferences. After you paste this link, then you need to go to sketch into no then you go to tools then to boards and then to boards manager and then here to type out as esp32 and here you need to install esp32 from espresso system and here you can select the version as 1.0.6 in my case i already installed so it is not showing up so yeah that's the first step that you need to follow second step is all the files need to be in the single folder only named as esp32 speech to text which i already told you and third is all uh, your credentials like i said name password google cloud key and the open uh, open api key need to be entered in one single uh, header file called as credentials.as so this is something which i simplified this time so earlier you need to enter credentials in different different header files but now i have created one single header file which is credentials.as here you can provide the same name and password of your wi-fi router so i will quickly provide that after that here you need to provide the google speech to text api key then here you can uh, choose your own language so right now i have chose the language as indian english then here are the credentials for chat gpt so first you need to provide the chat gpt token and after that here you need to provide the open ai model so earlier the model was davinci but that was not working so new model is gpt 3.5 turbo then here is the uh, variable for temperature and for the max tokens uh, that you can learn more about in the documentation of chat gpt so basically all the credentials need to be entered here and this is the only header file that you need to change rest of everything will be saved as it is you don't need to do any changes so after providing all these things now you can upload this code onto your esp32 board and for that you need to select the board as esp32 do it dev kit v1 so uh, let me show you uh, go to boards then to ESP32 Arduino, then scroll down and here you need to select the board as do it ESP32 DevKit V1. After doing that, you just need to select the right COM board and you need to hit the upload button and this will upload the code onto your uh, first ESP32 which is for speech to text. Similarly, let's move on to the next code which is for text to speech which is way more simpler than this one. So for that again, I'll go to the folder which I downloaded from my GitHub repository and this time I'll go to text to speech. And here as you can see there's only one single Arduino file. I'll quickly open it up. And here I also provided a couple of prerequisites to make this code work on your system. First is the same one, 1.0.6 ESP32 boards package you need to have. Then you need to install the audio.h library which whose link is mentioned in the code itself. So you just need to click here which will open up a GitHub repository. And here you need to click on the code and download zip button. After downloading the zip file, you need to go to sketch into include library then to uh, add zip library. And go to the folder where you have downloaded this library and here just click on that zip file and just click on the choose button this will add the library to your arduino id now make sure you add the same library whose link is mentioned here many of the people have installed different different audio.h library and landed among the issues okay so that's the second uh, requirement and third is need to add, enter the credentials like wi-fi si name and password in the same file which is here so here i'll provide the wi-fi si name and that's pretty much it this is the only change that you need to do inside this code rest of everything will remain as it is and now again after selecting uh, select the right board and port you can hit the upload button this will upload the code for text to switch and that was the simplest method uh, that you need to follow to make your project work on your side without any error okay so after uploading the code on both the esp32 board let's just power up the device and ask some questions to chat gpt so let me wave my hand on proximity sensor who is your creator so when the red light is turned on the project is listening to your voice and when the green light is turned on, your audio is given to the Google Cloud for converting your speech to text. And once it received the text, it is given to the OpenAI server. And at that time, the light will be I'm blue. An AI created by a team of developers. I do not have a creator in the traditional sense. And as you can see, after all the processing, we are getting the response onto the speaker straight from the chat GPT. Let me ask one more question. Do you Hindi? मुझे हिंदी आती है मेन हिंदी भाषा में लिखना और बोलना दोनों कर सकती हूं so yeah, that was my chat GPT version 2, but still I will not be selling this project and I have a couple of reasons for that. First of all, I particularly not convinced 100% with this particular version because it is not completely battery efficient. It is not working great on battery. Even I tried replacing the HT7333 with XC6203 IC, which is also an LDO, but with a higher output current. But still, it was not perfect. So I'm 
planning to do some modification into the hardware part and maybe launch the version 2.1 and I'm thinking of to eliminate the battery and make it work with a 5 volt adapter maybe or maybe your mobile phone charge and like powering the ESP uh, directly. So I'm thinking about it to make it more efficient, more reliable and then launch it uh, on my website for selling purpose and then you can you know replicate it or purchase it and can make it work on your side as well so still i need some time to do that but yeah once i do that i'll be not publishing the complete video about it because the coding will be exactly the same and in this video i tried to explain everything to eliminate all the coding based errors so i won't be making the complete video rather i'll be making some announcement or maybe youtube short about 2.1 version so make sure you stay connected with me on youtube and instagram other than that if you already purchased the esp32 chat gpt kit on my, from my website well you can try out my new code it will work in that kit as well and in the new code i hope you won't get any error just follow the video very very carefully so yeah that was all about this project now you let me know your suggestions about how was this project and what should i do more improvement if i ever make version 3 of this project should i move to raspberry pi rather than using two esp32s what do you think and do share your thoughts suggestion down in the comment of the video and also share this video with the one who are interested in making some interesting esp32 based iot project well this is definitely a great project to try out so yeah that was all from my side and now you just wait for my next video until then explore learn share with me techie sms